Welcome to the ClickHole Talks at Google. My name is Alec Foster, and I'm very pleased to welcome our honorable guests, the founding editors of ClickHole, Jermaine Alfonso and Ben Berkeley. Without any further ado, let's give them a warm googly here's to you <laughs> from us. Here's to you. Here's to you. Hello. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much for yes. that. Uh, we're, it's, we're thrilled to be here. We're so excited to be here at Google. Yes. Uh, my name is Jermaine. And I'm Ben. And um, we're, you know, we're the founding editors of ClickHole, like Alex said. And we're, we're, really, we're just so excited to be here. We're pumped. So, so, we so, put so, together, so, so excited. We really wanted to put together something really like, special for you guys. And um, you know, I, hope, I hope we have it. I think, I think this is really good. I think I, it's going to be I great. I think so. I think so. But um, you know, just in case, we. Uh, set up a little email address mm -hmm. um, for feedback. You know, so this is just for you guys. <laughs> yes, please, 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 please take advantage of this yeah. great service for, we're providing you. Click whole Google Talk feedback at yahoo.com. Um, you know, we just want you guys, whatever thoughts you have, whether it's positive, negative, we'd love to hear any of it. You know, and I think about, yeah. you, you can send them after, that's fine, but um, I think, you know, in about, 10, 15 minutes or so, I think we want to check into that and yeah. uh, kind of just look to see what you guys are saying, what you guys are thinking, sort of incorporate that into the We want to put together the best possible presentation for, for you guys. For you, for you Googlers. Yes. Um, so okay. yeah, without further ado though, I think yeah, we let's jump in. jump right into this. So I don't know how many of you guys are familiar with us or really uh, know I, what I am, we do. I am. You know yes. what we do. Great. Um, so yeah, let's show, let's show some of the stuff that we yeah, do. Yeah, so here's a thing that we do. Heartwarming, this fraternity brother came out as gay and was still just as much of an asshole. <laughs> this is such an inspiring tale. Yeah, you know, he's still just so much of a dickhead and it's, uh, it's just nice. It's good, it's a good heart, like, feel good story. He's, he's so brave. Um, and we've also done things like, awesome, this lucky school got two proms. <laughs> two proms. <laughs> what could be better? You know, across the city from each other, it's great. Yeah, so, good. so much fun. Both sides had a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, and five Disney princesses reimagined as Caucasian. <laughs> we like to do things, you know, little inspiring things for little white girls that are out there, you know, just to let them know that they can do you anything can they do want. It. The you can do it. You can do it. They got this. So that's what this is. Um, but the real thing we want to talk about here is, I guess at this point, is why, why are we even here? Yeah, why are we here? Uh, there it is. The big question. Yes. Um, so, the way this started, actually, was that we received a letter mm -hmm. in our office from Google, and, um, which was really exciting. Amazing. It was exciting the best to get day that. Of our lives. So Google a letterhead, we were yes. pumped. Um, and we actually have the letter sure. here, um, just to kind of reveal what, why exactly we're here. We're mm -hmm. going to read it out loud for you guys. Uh, also, the letterhead is gorgeous, <laughs> you guys. It's so good. Love the it's new so, logo. so good. Yes. All right, so here's the letter Dear Clickhole, this is Sergey Brin and Larry Page. Two men who found Google.com. <laughs> we are writing this letter from our company's latest innovation, a bicycle that can write letters and knows the date the Pope will die. Mm -hmm. wow, 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 wow. Today we are writing you because Google needs your help. <laughs> Every day our researchers are innovating technologies as varied as little doodles and automobiles that despise humanity. <laughs> but even still, there's one question we've never been able to answer. Viral content, how? <laughs> For over 10 years, we locked researchers in a room, having them shriek things at each other like, content going wi viral, why? Please content viral. <laughs> and the reason for viral content, we need to know it. And we've yielded no results. Even now, Google has over 12 intelligent employees, mm -hmm. and we are all clueless. This is why we're inviting you, ClickHole, to come to our lavish California prison to tell us how and why viral content. We need this, we need you. Love, Sergey and Larry. Now this really- That's so exciting. So really exciting. exciting. Oh my God. It warmed our hearts and we yes. decided to come out here and answer the big question. Yes. The massive question of our age. Which is how viral content. How, how viral content. How. And now we're going to answer that for you. Yes. Uh, we, we've got some steps. We figured it out. We know how to do it. You're going to know how to do it too. So the first step is Go on the internet. Go on the internet. Pretty simple. But the question is, what is the internet? How do you find it? What, is it, what does it look like? What does it look like? This is the internet. That's the internet. Okay. Uh, step two, familiarize yourself with what's popular online. You're going to want to know the big sites, mm -hmm. all the big sites of today. But Jermaine, now, what, what are the big sites? Well, we did a lot of research. Yes. Here are the big sites. Of sure. Today. OK. We've got uh, Amazon. Amazon.com. Go on there. You can get anything you want. 
Mail drive to Any time of day. Great and it's, a, it's, it's, it's incredible. All right, uh, Facebook. 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 Yes. Connect to your friends and family. Yes. All day, any day. So cool. They're so, so, time. so cool. What else? Uh, Bing. Bing is big. <laughs> yeah. That's. You know? Well, if you have a question, anything you kind of want to look up, you go, you can connect to all these other sites. It's amazing. The world amazing. is at your fingertips. <laughs> and there's another one which. I what it was. What was it? LinkedIn. 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 Yeah. Um, yeah. Wow. Well, those are the, those those are the sites. Those sites. are the only big, big sites. sites. OK, uh, step three, <laughs> identifying internet content. So it can be really confusing out there, the dividing be. line. What is internet content? What is, what is, what is it maybe not? Yeah, well, so, we put together a very handy mm -hmm. little rubric for you. Yes, um, uh, let's, let's run this test. So is this internet content? Jermaine, what do you think? I don't think so. I think you are correct. It is not. It is a fish on a plate. Uh, this right here. No. Human woman, you are correct. <laughs> How about this? All right, seven slots. We're almost too adorable to be going up the top of the Chrysler building. You got this. That's you content, got this. I you think. got this. Yes. Yes. Content. Yes. So now you know it. That's huge. All right, uh, step four. You're going to want to call the internet's best friend, see if he thinks the internet will like the content that you're sharing. Um, but who is the internet's best friend? Yeah. Well, the internet's best friend is actually Gabe. 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 Um, yeah, so they're best friends. Uh, they went to high school together. Yeah, they were the same prom group. Yeah, they went to Benihana for dinner. Yeah. Really great. Yes, um, contact him. Lifelong friends. Uh, step five, you're going to want to remember all those steps. <laughs> if you don't remember the steps, you can't do them. So let's recap. Yes, uh, so step one was go on the internet. Step two, know what's popular online. Step three is to identify internet content. Step four is the internet's best friend. And five is remember steps. That's a lot to remember. Yeah. We, we know that. So we wanted to give you a little device to remember this. Um, so we pulled out you know, the, the letters you need to know. So right here. Um, that, that, you know, that'll identify every step pretty easily in your mind. Put them together. Uh, put them together. Growler endings. Now, Super easy. That may not look like If you want to make it even easier, let's mix those up into sure. something even easier. Gary, Gary Shandling. Shandling. <laughs> and when you think Gary Shandling. What do you think of content going viral? Got it. <laughs> so. It's easy. That's it. It's real easy. Yeah. Now you can do it. It. You did it. You got it. Viral content. You know how to make it. You know it. how to do it. So give it up for yourself. Yeah, let's give it up for yourself. And you know what else? For viral content. Let's give up, give up viral content. Let's go. Because yeah. here's the thing. At ClickHole, we believe, at the end of the day, that all content deserves to go viral. Mm -hmm. All of it. Every single Every one. Every single piece of content. Let's hear it. Let's all say it together. Yeah. Come on. All, all content, content deserves, deserves to go viral. viral. All content, content, and again, all, all content, content deserves, deserves to go viral. viral. We're it's not true. talking tens of thousands of pages. We're talking millions. millions. Every billions? piece of content <laughs> all deserves to go viral. All of it. Here's the thing, though. Um, unfortunately, God, what just happened? All right. <laughs> um, the thing is, not all content is able to go viral. In fact, every day, many pieces of content fail to go viral for one reason or another. Sad. Many of them are very young. So sad. And um, we've actually put together a little tribute to the uh, Content we've lost, content that didn't go viral. Yeah. Let's, let's do that right now. Yes.
Well, you know, we I think it's, think it's about a good time to yeah, uh, yeah let's check in check in on uh, some of the some of your feedback. You know, yes. see what yeah we've gotten some let's emails. Maybe see what we've got Have here. Emails let's pop the... out of this for a second. Oh. Excuse us. Oh my <laughs> goodness, we got some emails here. Oh, great. This is fantastic. <laughs> okay, so let's just see what we got. Let's start at the bottom. Just kind of read through these. Yeah, let's see what's going on a little on. bit. Oh, it's this showing up for you guys. Uh, well, uh, the thing. How did I? Let's do that. Okay. Cheated a little bit. Okay. Uh, so this one's from William Fivis. Uh, Dear Clickle, I have one question about your talk at Google so far, which is why aren't there more pictures of sand? I was hoping to see at least some pictures of sand, and so far I haven't seen any. Help me. Okay. Fair. Yeah. yeah good. We good, can good feedback. Some Very good feedback. Of sand. Very good feedback. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Let's go back to the old inbox. Uh, oh. Okay. Gene uh, Henley. What is this? <laughs> Dear Phil, hmm. I don't know how to tell you this, but I don't love you anymore. I've had feelings for your brother Dave since I met him on our wedding night. I can't keep ignoring my feelings. We're in love, Phil, and I'm leaving you. Sincerely, Jane. She found love. She found love. She found love. <laughs> That's awesome. Great. Okay, good for awesome. her. Awesome. Yeah, it's so exciting. Email, but okay. Sure. Uh, oh, what is this guy? Who is this? Steven, Steven Spielberg. Spielberg. Oh my God. Okay. Oh my uh, God. Dear Clickle, this talk is bad. The only thing worse than this talk is working with child actors because they're living scum who cannot act. I'll never watch another click called talk again, and more importantly, I'll never work with another child actor again. It's really Steven Spielberg. Steven Spielberg. Living legend. That's huge. Oh my god. Okay. Wow, he's watching uh, this. Uh, let's see. Okay. What is oh, this? This doesn't look good. Um, it's from a doctor, though. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Dear Phil, we received the results of your biopsy, and we are sorry to, sorry to report that you have cancer. It's inoperable, and we believe that the rate it's currently spreading you approximately three months to live. I realize it's highly unorthodox to email a patient the results of their biopsies, but we're making an exception to the rule this time because your cancer is really bad. In fact, it's hard to call what you have cancer because it's so, so much worse. Like, it's really awful. A nurse cried when she saw your biopsy. She had to take the rest of the day off. What I'm saying, Phil, is that they're going to name a state after you because your cancer is so bad. Jesus. Wow. Anyway, oh boy, Dr. Uh, Henley Billingsley. Really nice guy, though. That nice. sounds great. Like that nice was a nice man. email. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's just keep kind of seeing what else we got. Uh, this just looks positive. Dear Clickle, I haven't been watching your talk, but I just want to let you know that I'm a huge fan of emails. Can't get enough emails. Love them. Marcia Jen Jennings. I also awesome. like emails. I love them. Huge They're great. Okay, good. Oh, we're doing well. Got a lot of good feedback. Yeah. Uh, email confusion. Oh, okay. Right, let's see, what is this email confusion? Dear Clickle, <laughs> my name is Philip Henley. I recently discovered that your email address, mm. clickhole Google Talk Feedback at Yahoo.com is very similar to my email address, clickhole Google Talk Feedback 2 at mm. Yahoo.com, mm. and that you might be getting some of my mail. Seems like a very easy mix up. Anyway, if you're getting my emails, let me know. Oh, we can send them over. That's great. Yeah, that's that like nice. such a nice guy. Yeah. Sign such a good thanks. thanks. Oh, thanks. Wow. That's sweet. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I guess we can see. Yeah, this is a is People That's think a this lot. is not real. Uh, we're your hand yeah, idiot. We're hand <laughs> idiot. Uh, sure. Uh, I love all this feedback. The, let's see. So nice. Part after. Oh, that's actually, that's, <laughs> that's, that's not true. Uh, this works, uh, Yahoo email works a lot better on our preferred browser, Safari. Um, uh, what else? Let me ask, oh, that's not good. I've been uh, under the podium. <laughs> it looks pretty bolted down. Yeah. Sorry, Tyler. 
I'm so sorry. Th thanks for coming, though, Tyler. Yeah, Thank you for coming. Really nice That's really to have great. You here. Okay. Uh, scared to go on the internet. Uh, I don't like this one. No. <laughs> I don't know what I said. Uh, That's the same one, right? It, oh, yeah, I just was actually reading it this time. I don't know. This is sad. This one's just sad. Sure. Come on, Derek. What else is going on? We don't need this, Derek. Oh. Oh. Yeah. This is great. Aww. That's actual feedback. That's really nice. Cool. Cool. All right. All right. Well, that's. I feel like we, we can incorporate some of this going forward. This yeah, is actually really helpful. Know, very, very helpful for us. Okay. That this we're is, an idiot. Yeah, we are and idiot. Yeah. Uh, um, that's fine. All right. Uh, well, I think we want to go a little bit into the next section of this and take you guys sort of actually behind the scenes <laughs> of ClickHole and what we do and um, like our writing process and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so let's talk about how it's made. How it's made. Um, well, we can talk about just the numbers of people behind it, such yeah. as eight full-time writers and editors. Um, we also have additional uh, support staff, freelance writers, graphics, uh, video people are incredible. It's a very, very collaborative process. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of hands touch it. Um, it's not something where, you know, there's a reason there aren't bylines on the site, which is because it's, it, it is that group effort. Yeah, it's very cooperative. Um, and and it, these are these people. Yeah, that, that's the group. And click and our new click hole uh, hoodies that are not available don't ask, anywhere. Don't ask. Don't ask. Right. Um, they're pretty, um, pretty sweet. Yeah. Uh, we, so we start, everything starts with a headline, which. Yeah, kind of, so it's, it's kind of similar to the onion process, uh, which is that every joke that you see on click hole, it starts with a headline, you have the article, it all is pitched in the headline form. So you can see, amazing, uh, this school has two proms. That's kind of what's written on the page, and we kind of talk about it, and we go from there. Basically, every writer goes home and comes up with anywhere between 10 to 20 headlines, come in with that. They email them in. We put them on a list, and we sit around kind of at this table and uh, talk through the, um, uh, like, people will sort of pitch an idea out loud, and either it's met with resounding silence, and we all move on, or we like it and laugh, and as we're doing in this, Lovely image. We're, uh, like two people are laughing. Laugh. Two people laughing. Everyone else yeah. is dead silent. Um, <laughs> and then, um, and then it goes in. It goes into the site. We brainstorm it. We brainstorm the idea, and then one writer Better. kind of takes it home and uh, actually puts it all together and uh, breaks the piece. Right. And uh, one thing that we should talk about next is volume. Um, so there are about 850 to 1,000 uh, ideas pitched every week, um, which you know ultimately maybe what 50 or so of those end up going anywhere. Um, so it's, it's frustrating. Um, but it's, I mean, that's kind of the, the magic of, of ClickHole, which is stolen from the magic of The Onion, which that is that similar percentages at work there, where you're just pitching so many things. Um, and then uh, the, this, the, the quality standard is so high that things are being, jokes are being knocked down for reasons that we can talk about it later if we want. Yeah, we'll but, talk about it later. But like sometimes it's very simple things. Like it feels too similar to something we've done before. A lot of times it feels too similar to someone has read on Twitter or something else. And then we kind of just want it to feel original, fresh, and as much from our own voice and unique and mm -hmm. the right level of funny. To a be lot of really funny stuff doesn't make it, yeah. which we can show you some of that in a bit. Um, so talking about graphics, I think this is something that is underrated um, on, on this site, which is we have very talented graphic artists who build the worlds for us. They, they can take on, I mean, the things they can do on Photoshop, I don't know how yeah, they're real. Yeah, we ask them to do some insane yeah. stuff, and they always deliver in yeah. amazing ways. Just taking so many different elements, putting them together. So we just have a couple of before and afters to, to yeah. show off here for them. Um, this is the kindest yeah. man alive. John Hamm guarded this nest of orphan steak <laughs> eggs for three months, part of our John Hamm character, where he does Good things for animals. Um, so this is the first one, the so beginning this image. Is shot in our office, in the kitchen in our office. Yeah. Um, and then all of a sudden, that turns into that guy. <laughs> uh, taking another look, we have Meet the Puppeteer behind Blue Ivy, um, which is funny. Um, so this was just shot in our studio. And then that all of a sudden becomes that right there. <laughs> Uh, this Make-A-Wish kid couldn't decide what he wanted, so they slid him along a deli counter like a sandwich. <laughs> Great headline. Um, let's look at the image. This is Eric, one of our uh, one of the audience graphics people, and he with an actor. And then this was shot also in our kitchen, and that became. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yep. Uh, so another wonderful thing about working where we work is uh, the response to everything we do is uh, it's it's fun. Yeah. It's, cra it's crazy. Yeah, like the idea, like a satirical thing, sometimes people take things seriously, take it for real. That's never the intention. The intention is always that it's a joke. Mm -hmm. um, but it happens, and people respond in fantastic ways. <laughs> here are some of the best ones. Yeah, so here's a blog that ran on ClickHole. The ability to play as Bowser has made our society more <laughs> evil. Uh, so this entire blog was just premise, but just this guy basically go on and saying, like, as soon as Mario Kart came out, and people could play as Bowser, society fell apart. You know, the option to select, to select the unscrupulous Wario is vulgar, but allowing gamers, often young gamers, to select the, to select the wanton, lascivious Koopa King is beyond barbarous. <laughs> it's outright criminal. So someone took this seriously. They took it so seriously. I have the email right here, which is maybe the angriest email I've ever seen working at The Onion uh, about Bowser. Uh, so that's surprising. Um, and it's it's. Dreadfully long, so we edited a little bit, but you'll get the gist. When I was shown this article about how Bowser has been the problem of our society ever since he appeared in Mario Kart, I was appalled by the very notion of this bullcrap. <laughs> to blame one Nintendo villain for being playable in a game of racing and say he's the reason everything bad is happening in the world offends me. <laughs> People from the so-called Bowser generation said how it's affected them in the blog, saying things like, Bowser taught me that good is stupid and that evil is good. And, or they said, my little brother always picks Bowser when they Play, when we play Smash, something has died inside him since that. Or even 9-11 happened just nine years later. <laughs> Seriously, what the hell? This is not something to say at all. How in the hell does a villain character get blamed for a terrorist attack? There are worse characters than Bowser in the Nintendo company, and even worse outside Nintendo. To pin it on one character is unacceptable. There have also been plenty of games where Bowser was a good guy or worked with Mario to defeat a greater enemy. He's not all bad, but he isn't good either. But this doesn't mean he's bad enough to wreak havoc by corrupting children born after the game's release. He's a great character who's loved by many people, and just because some kid would play as him doesn't mean he's going to go blow up a building when he grows up, doesn't mean he's going to go mental and set random civilians on fire. It's just a kid playing a game. So that's why I'm not asking but demanding this article be removed from the face of the planet uh, to prevent any uprising this blogger creates from his poorly written story full of lies, possibly hate, and useless information. Thank you for your time, and I will be watching for that post to be erased from mankind. Very passionate. Man. Very passionate about Bowser. Yes. Never saw that coming. This um, is another one. Yes. Yeah, this is five tragedies. Classic. Yeah, this was a very popular article, and you know, it had things like. Um, he, in the middle of Happy Gilmore, Adam Sandler turned right to the camera and then said, Princess Diana will die in three years, and um, <laughs> things like that. And um, you know, it went online. People thought it was a joke. It was popular. But then some people took it seriously. And some people in our comment section would even say things like, I actually remember that moment <laughs> from Billy Madison. I totally remember that, when it said, Be the BP oil spill will happen in five years. Um, but what's also interesting is that this article started gaining traction among white supremacists who um, posted it on their forums as like evidence for why the Jews were evil and magic because they could predict future tragedies and then like it was it, like in the, if you look at the forum it would like go down and everyone would be like yeah I knew it I knew it I knew that you and they just went down and then eventually one person sort of a level-headed white supremacist came into the fray and was like guys guys uh, clickhole is a satire site made by people who made the onion the Jews are evil, but not because <laughs> they're not magic. This is a joke. So yeah, um, that's what happened this one. Uh, 90s kids rejoice. The spider eggs they used to fill Beanie Babies are finally hatching. <laughs> so this is Clickle's. This is this is a classic for us already. Yeah. Um, it's it's been our most viewed story. It's uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a very fun take on a very twisted take on nostalgia and how that's played out in the world. Yeah. Um, the, the the feedback on this is maybe a little sad. Yeah. So one uh, we we got a call at our front desk from an older woman, presumably, who was calling about um, her son's Beanie Babies and how she'd taken them and wrapped them all up in duct tape. And then she was calling to find out, like, what else could she do to prevent the eggs from <laughs> hatching? She was desperate to find out, like, what the next steps that she could take, yeah. which is really sad. Um, but, but, also but also very funny, funny. and great for us. 
Uh, so another one would uh, was this campaign that happened with us for was Stan Stan for Manny or Stan with Manny. That's yeah. I didn't I can't even read. That's not good. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this was a little bit more of a social media thing. It wasn't part of a planned article. We have a, a really great social media guy, Dan, who works on all of our social media, but he engages with the audience, basically, and always is in the comments section, going back and forth with people. And in this case, he's happened to see uh, someone tweet, uh, just a kid tweeted this kind of interesting thing, fuck the school district block click hole, and now I have nothing to do in yearbook. <laughs> um, and so he saw that and was like, what if we responded to this in a, in a, in a fun way? And so we did. This guy actually changed his Twitter handle, which is going to be a little why. confusing. Yeah, yeah what's but that um, guy about? this is what is original. At Manny Hopkin, we will not be silenced. Stand with Manny. <laughs> so we tweeted that, and it started gaining all this traction amongst our fans. People were tweeting at him, tweeting at other people to support Stand with Manny. Um, and just like someone tweeted Barack Obama, Barack Obama should announce that he supports Stand with Manny. Mm -hmm. I told everyone that if he took God out of the schools, click hole would be next. <laughs> What happened to the First Amendment? Has extended. So this went on for an entire afternoon. It was kind of just a fun example of a very like impromptu thing that kind of happened out of nowhere, like not even planned in our writer's room or anything. It was just like a really cool and uh, fun way to engage with our audience. Yes. Uh, let's move on to some favorites, yeah. uh, personal favorites for us, um, which is a very hard task. Um, and you know, we love them all. Um, so this is mine to start. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Youngest child ever, Jonah is just three years old. Uh, I just love how clickholes, uh, they, they don't understand the world. It, it, it's just like a complete lack of understanding of what the world is and how it actually functions. And it's delightful. Um, and then uh, this sheriff you created this, the ocean needs more places for this guy to sit down. Uh, I just, you know, got to support the whales. Um, and then uh, literally amazing, this incredible dad loved his family so much he got eye enlargement <laughs> surgery so he could look at them more. That's quite the image. It's so twisted and so, <laughs> but so beautiful Yeah. at the same time. I'm so time. excited about it. Uh, Jermaine, your favorite. Yeah, so I love this quiz. Someone mentioned earlier, which one of my garbage sons are you? Which is a really fun quiz. It's really hard to articulate why this is so great unless you play through the quiz. So. You should really yes. do that. It's <laughs> great. Uh, disgusting. ISIS just released a two-star review in the airplane over the sea. I also love this. This is, a, this is also like our continuing ISIS character, where they con continually try to take down America in increasingly insane ways. They recently put up a, the Pentagon on eBay, mm -hmm. I believe, this week. Those bastards at ISIS. Monsters. This is one I love. Uh, oh, also, I put on a fat suit. <laughs> understand what it's like to be your mom. I wanted to know what it felt like to, when your mom put on a raincoat and went outside and they everyone yelled taxi. I, I love this one. It's a really great way to uh, get the, the your mom joke back in the zeitgeist in a fun and interesting way. It's time. It needs yeah. to get back. All right, we're, gonna, we're just going to talk very briefly about kind of the writer's room, um, which we'll do a Q&A in just a minute, and we can talk more about that if you have more specific questions. But just kind of talking about how certain things can come and go in yeah. that room. Um, so we're going to talk just a very, very, this is a, like, if you wonder where we get ideas, this is going to be the very, uh, a very underwhelming story, potentially. But uh, there's this video, whoa, <laughs> one door, two people. Which is basically exactly what it is. It's a door opens, two people come out of it, inspiring music swells and plays. But the way this happened was we were in our writer's room, literally about to start a meeting, and then Ben and our, our editorial assistant, Fran, they both just walked into a door together. Like, he walked in, then she walked in right after, and someone just said, whoa, one door, two people. And we're like, yes, yes. We're so doing, put it on the site. Then two weeks later, that was a video. Inspiring stuff. <laughs> yeah. um, and then there's this headline, this stingray, this stingray misbehaved, so he dropped it through a paper shredder. So people really loved this idea in our writer's room. Yes. And I would say, so on average, I think if people really like an idea, it's brainstormed maybe for like, I don't know, two three, to five three, minutes. Yeah, three, four, like, if it's something we're excited about, then we put it online. We sat around talking about this for 30 minutes. <laughs> I swear to God. And like, we, people, the brainstorms just got increasingly more insane. And mm -hmm. we always have, so we have someone typing at all times, getting all these notes down. We have a little excerpt from some of this. 
He stung one of our friends. What were we supposed to do? What a jackass. It just went on for a long time. If stingrays aren't, if stingrays aren't supposed to go in paper shredders, then how come they slide right down? You can't spank, spank him. Their butt is a weapon. You can only put him through a shredder. So this went on for 30 minutes. I think at the end of it all, we ended up deciding, you know what, this is really better as a one-liner. We don't really need an article. So it went on the section on the site called Next Week on ClickHole, which is just pure one-liners that never have articles with them. So that was a, so, yeah. a so, waste, except for in this moment where you get to, know, get to know that this it. happened. Yeah, uh, so now we're going to actually talk about what kind of what ClickHole has taught us. We've been at this now for, uh, we launched last June. Um, so we have a little bit of time under our belts and have just kind of seen the way the world has taken this site. Um, and just kind of, we're, we're very, we're reflecting. Yeah, it's yeah, a beautiful we, moment we for us. Um, so the first lesson is just that the internet is weird. Very, very, obviously a very good lesson to take away. Yeah, and I think to us what that means is that the, the internet is very absurd. Well, the internet's like the weirdest thing in existence, and we all use it all the time, which is strange. But um, <laughs> the, the big thing is that I think one of the big concerns when we were starting the site, both internally and externally, is how are you going to make fun of something that it's already a self-parody of itself and things that are, it's already so weird, how are you going to do it? And I think the way we responded to that was by making, by honing in on kind of this very weird and surreal voice, very specific tone, and kind of trying to out weird the internet as much as possible. And which is hard. <laughs> which is really hard, and it's a continuing process. Um, but I think that's kind of one of our big takeaways. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, another one is that the internet is also good. Um, <laughs> these are, these are uh, you know, I think that was something where we came into this not really sure what would happen when you interact with the internet in any way, because we've both. Uh, before click all happened, we were just working at the onion, and the onion is this monolith. There's no, there's never, just the character of the onion is to never acknowledge our readers in any positive way. Yeah. Um, and so for us, it was okay. Now we have to do a site where you probably need to interact with people, and then what you know about the internet is that the like commenting society <laughs> is evil. not a society. It's yeah. it's anarchy. Um, and then we did click all, and we were surprised that it's actually. Great. Yeah, we have really cool fans that like kind of support jokes and kind of don't make it about themselves, kind of make it about the greater thing, the greater joke. And so we had, you know, here's to you, which was a very popular article. Basically, we said this is the most viral image on the internet. We have a winner. It's the most viral thing. It's everywhere. Everyone is sharing it. And so people, our fans, seemingly went out of their way to try and actually make it the most yeah. shared internet <laughs> image on the internet. Like every clickhole article will have in the Facebook comments will have some iteration of the here's to you guy in some weird things that, he, that happened to him. Then in a, in a sort of a different vein, we recently did a campaign, let's give Bob Dylan a nice bed, <laughs> which was um, the idea was to do a crowd, crowdfunding thing. And um, you know, Bob Dylan is a music legend. He's given us so many things. So we thought we had to give, some, give him something back. And what better than a sleep number bed? <laughs> um, so we raised, uh, what was it, $1,500, more than that, to, yeah. Buy yeah. him a bed. Everyone chipped in. Um, we had like a reward system for people who gave a certain amount, and um, you know we bought the bed. We confirmed delivery to Columbia Records. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we haven't confirmed that he has it, but we, we know. probably we know. Has, he has we know he has he's it. on it right he's now. He bed. has to be on it right now. Yeah. There's no other way that this could be going. Yeah. Um, a third a third lesson is that stupid is also good. Um, <laughs> These are two things. So this one we did right when the site launched. I believe the headline was, we left a stick of butter out in room temperature, and you won't believe what happens next. <laughs> then you got a five-hour video of butter melting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then to top of that, we did it again a year later. We left a stick of butter out in room temperature. You won't believe what happens next. Patriotic edition. <laughs> Flag in the thing. Um, so yeah, we, we like stupid things. And yeah, and, and so I, I kind of like to think of it that we have the only uh, work environment maybe in the world where you can directly say to your coworkers when they present an idea to you, that is so dumb, and it is a genuine compliment. It's like yeah. the best thing you can say to them. So that's weird. Um, another lesson is, oh my god. Uh, <laughs> 
William, I think William, William, is William, be very happy William wanted those this. pictures of sand. <laughs> See, we listen to your feedback, people. Come on, look at that. There's another one. That's pretty good. Yeah, it's good. I think it's good sand. Yeah, you're welcome, William. Um, lesson four is that everything is amazing. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's a big part of Clickhole's voice is that we are excited constantly about everything in the world ever. Doesn't matter if it's good or bad. Whatever it is, Clickhole will say it's amazing. It's wow, great, oh, cool. And I think that's a parody of like clickbait culture. Everything that you see on the internet is the biggest thing. It is the best thing. This is the thing. You have to, you got to click on this. And so that's kind of the voice that we're going for. And um, I think it's reflected not just in our headlines, but in the videos and articles we make ourselves, like this was Ham goes up an escalator. The headline was, yes, Ham goes up an escalator. And the way it's shot is inspiring and beautifully shot the Ham going up the thing. And there's a pause in the music. And it's like, it, it really influences every aspect of the site, that enthusiasm and positivity. Yeah, and comedically, it also sets it aside a little bit, because most comedy is coming from a place that's a little bit less happy. Um, so it's, it's, it's one of the few entities out there that's really doing something where it's this hyper positive comedy. Yeah. Um, so that's that's kind of been really nice to watch, and also very nice for the people who've worked on The Onion, who could like, oh, we can do something a little bit more happy. Yeah. Um, which is great. And then we have other things, which is you guys. Yes. So, so. we're opening up for a Q and A and just get questions. Oh, no, being brave. Okay. Hey, uh, would you say that this audience is a representative sample of your demographic? We haven't looked at you guys once. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably, probably. Probably? OK. I think so. People yeah. who work at Google? Ask you yeah, I, I think exclusively people who work at Google are on our site. And that's fine, because there are so many of you. For the people on VC, the question is, have any celebrities taken the quotes that you publish on social media seriously attributed to them? I forgot there are other people watching us. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't like, I I don't like that. That's not good. Watching us right now. Um, yeah, actually. Yeah. Uh, who, uh, oh, um, Russell Crowe? Russell Crowe got really <laughs> upset. I actually remember what we even said about him. Oh, um, I called it rubbish, though. Anderson Cooper, yeah, and the, Anderson Cooper yes. Uh, Anderson Cooper. Oh, yeah. yeah. Anderson Cooper got uh, confused. We attributed him to speaking at, uh, we said that he gave a speech at New York University. And then he, uh, like, he said, like, uh, this is really weird thing about golfing to students. <laughs> and like hitting a hole in one. And then he was like, well, where did you guys get this from? I didn't speak at NYU. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we've had a couple of runs like that. The question is, what's the process for developing like ventures? Oh, man. Those take yeah. a really long time for, basically, what happens is a writer is set aside, it goes, goes away for, what, like a week? A week, yeah. About. And just sort of puts one of them together. You know, they're all pitched in the room at like the headlines, so um, uh, we had like one about winning a cooking competition, and you know, we all liked the idea, we're like, okay, cool. And then the writer just kind of goes off, makes half of it, kind of starts putting it together, and then they come in um, halfway through the week and check in with us, and we, we all kind of look at it, play through it, offer suggestions. Um, it's cool because because it's so elaborate and so hard to put together. The writers like really get a full say in what it is, and like not much editing happens to it. Not much else is touched. So it's kind of the writer owns. Do we need to ventures. clarify what click ventures oh, are? By the way, oh, maybe maybe click ventures are the uh, we have the, this new feature on our site, which are just like uh, choose your own adventure games that you can sort of play through various scenarios. We had, I think our first one was, can you survive a bear attack? Mm -hmm. And so you're presented with that, and you have to go through it. The answer is almost entirely no. Most of the time, yeah. it's no. Yeah. So instead of trying to out BuzzFeed BuzzFeed, which when I heard there's like going to be a satire side of clickbait, I was like, how could they satire it? Uh, you went with a more surreal direction. Uh, what? What do you see as like, uh, apart from surrealism, the sort of data stuff, what is uh, the strength and voice of Clickhole? And what if BuzzFeed starts going surreal? Uh, I mean, well, I would just say, for one thing, we're never really that concerned about other sites. I think once we launched it, we had, we had kind of, we were moored by, by clickbait and kind of trying to, that was like a, a good entry point for us. And then from there, it just turned into, let's 
this is kind of anything that's on the internet, we can, if that's our playground, go for it. Let's make the best comedy site that there is. Um, so we're not necessarily looking at, you know, if they do that, which I guess they've, they've started doing more comedy. Um, OK, <laughs> that's fine. Um, and then voice, strength of voice. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think it's just so specific and like uh, such a spe specific voice that we have that even if someone else tried to be absurd, and there are lots of, there's a lot of things on the internet that are absurd, I just think that our way of doing it is so specific that there's kind of room for everyone in a way. And like, I, I think people like our stuff and we'll keep coming in and checking in on our voice and our, our, our specific absurdities and our little obsessions. Yeah, and to clarify, also just, you know, our big concern at the outset was that, like, how do you, it, how do you satirize a moving target? Because um, everything that, you know, New media, if that's I hate that phrase, um, if that's what we're parroting with Clickhole, like that's changing all the time. Um, so we want to make sure it was flexible enough where we do actually sit down and you know yesterday we were just talking like okay what's next, um, and that's that's a, we, we don't have answers, but um, <laughs> that's I think that's that's kind of the the challenge of Clickhole is that it's always going to need to be changing over the years. And what's really cool about just to tie this in really fast to the Click Venture thing is that. Click Ventures for us, that was like the choose your adventure things. They don't really exist elsewhere. And so when we first launched, you know, we did lists, which are online, quizzes, which are online, uh, articles, which obviously exist. And then we kind of grew into this other thing, which it wasn't parodying anything. It was just getting the voice that we established through our parody into this new form. And so in that way, I think we can keep doing that and keep branching out and growing the legs of the monster kind of in new and exciting ways. The question is about sponsored content and how those sponsorships come into place. Uh, I mean, that's something we'll, specifically us, we get approached by our, by our business staff. Um, so the exact mechanics of that are, can be hazy. Um, I mean, they're, they're, they send out requests for proposals to every site that exists that has, you know, that hits certain traffic benchmarks and all of that and has the right demographic and all that. So um, I think we, we, get, we get a lot of dif different things from a lot of different companies coming through, always looking to do this and that. Uh, yeah. And yeah, Ford, Ford worked for us. Yeah. I wish the answer to that was cooler. Yeah, I really, that would be great. I'm so sorry. Question is, are there any off-limits topics? Um, I think, you know, coming from The Onion, we've learned that you can make fun of any subject it's all about picking the right target. And if you're picking the right target, anything can happen. Mm -hmm. you, you can make fun of any subject. And in fact, you should make fun of anything and everything. As long as you're not, you're, it's always about punching up and not punching down. Correct. You know, you never want to make fun of the victim. Um, and that's, that's really just a, a big onion lesson that we've carried through to Clickle. So I, I would say no, overall. Um, if anything, subjects tend to be more avoided because they're like, is this going to be too hacky? Is everyone kind of just making this joke on Twitter if we can't find a unique enough take on it? Um, but never because of the dangerous or offending people thing. Hi. So I only see your posts on Facebook because I don't have accounts anywhere else. Have you guys discovered which time works best for posting? Do you know, <laughs> the people, there are people that work on that constantly, kind of, and are always thinking about it. Um, I don't know. I also don't know if there's really a science to, to that still, even right now. It just seems, I think it like really varies even week from week. Yeah, you have to reinvent. You have to, you're, we're reinventing the wheel every, every day, um, which is hard. Um, but yeah, I think that's, yeah, I don't think there's necessarily any. Yeah, it's really, it's really hard to say like when would be the best time to post something. I mean, I guess if you're, you try to think about when people are at work and Sure. It's like you don't like we don't do anything new at like night, so it's like very obvious things like that. But other than that, right? Not really. Yeah. That's also something <laughs> great will spread regardless of when it goes out. Like you can put something that's out true, on yeah. a Friday night, and if it's hitting the right marks, then it's it's gone. Yeah, that's actually true. Then gone in the good way, like out into the world. <laughs> kind of uh, dovetailing off that question about like what time is best to post. Uh, when creating headlines, is that totally a human process, or do you guys have any kind of formulas for what's going to hit? Um, 
I, you know, what were you gonna say? I was going to say, we, we always talk about it. It's impossible to ever guess what's going to do. Yeah, it's really hard to tell what'll, what'll do well. I mean, I think probably individually, the thing is, when you're pitching these ideas, you a lot of times don't even think about the audience, which is crazy to think about. But you're kind of thinking about the other people in the room because you're pitching towards, obviously, eventually it'll go out to the audience. But before it gets there, it has to get through eight writers who have to like your idea. So I think a lot of times people really try to think about the eight people in the room. Are they going to like it? Or, OK, who's, what, how can I make them like it? They've heard, they've been tired of this idea. So like, that's kind of the first barrier. Um, in terms of like what will be popular, what, what will not be popular online, that's just like really hard to tell. I mean, yeah. I feel like recently we had a headline about Taylor Swift, um, about uh, how she was getting revenge on a fan <laughs> for a tweet over like three years. And then she, and, but like that one, you kind of have an idea. Like people like to talk about her. Maybe it'd be popular, but even then, it's hard to tell. Mm -hmm. Question is the, the is the horror of the site a conscious part of the editorial process? Um, I don't know how we. I, I don't. We really don't sit around. I think and dissect things that far down. But I think that certain influences are recurring among certain writers' work, and then we like we just gravitate towards them naturally. So it's a very like natural process as opposed to sitting down. Because I feel like if we sat down and we were like at the very beginning, we want to make a site that's absurd but also twisted, also a little dark, and then you know try to put it all in a formula, I think it would be it would feel contrived and not good. And I think letting it evolve naturally, letting the writer's sensibilities kind of flow together and uh, all blend into one thing, beautiful thing, is like I think that's kind of what, what has influenced all of those elements of the site. There's, there's also going to be a bit of an inherent darkness just based on the fact that this was born out of The Onion, um, where that's something where every, you know, most of the staff, uh, they were either uh, on staff on The, uh, on the Onion or um, contributing for, mm -hmm. for a while before. So that, that, there's a draw um, that draws a certain sensibility, um, which has some of those elements. Um, and I think that's, uh, you know, that, that also kind of ended yeah. up informing the site, too. Hey, so do you guys uh, share any ideas with The Onion? Like if you have something that's like feels like a good idea but just isn't totally right for? Uh, I think a lot of maybe individual writers will do things. Yeah. Like sometimes like a, an Onion writer will email an idea over to me and it's like, yeah, let's put it on our list. And I'm, I think writers will pitch things back and forth like that. Um, I don't know if there's anything, been any official like, oh, this would be perfect I don't, pitch. I don't think it's happened. Yeah, yeah, like a staff, staff to staff <laughs> turn around on an idea. No. But individuals will pitch ideas back and forth all the time, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're all pitched as videos. Yeah. Um, I think we, we have, in fact, we have specific meetings. And you know, other the Fridays, for example, that's the day where you pitch video ideas. And they can, I, I have to, has there been one that started out as like an article and then went video? Um, sometimes we'll have something that like is pitched as a headline, not a video. Like I think we'd have the beautiful. This woman took a picture of herself every day for a week, sure. and like um, <laughs> so it was just like a grid of photos of a woman. And then we were like, you know, it'd be amazing is if like on YouTube people will put them all together with a nice music bed underneath. And so we did that. We made like a two-second video <laughs> of her just like <laughs> in one week. So like that's something like that will happen. Sure. We'll have we'll, like we'll like add an element to a, a bit like. Uh, We'll add a video element to articles sometimes. Any anecdotes about the long, Pharaohs of Silicon Valley, which is the Google, the click hole Google visit uh, piece? <sighs> yeah, it's, I'm trying to think if there's anything fun in the process. I mean, the process was probably very boring. It was written by uh, one of our writers, Adam Levine, who um, uh, sat down and put put that thing together, and it's great. Um, <laughs> I yeah, it was very very simple. He pitched the idea. It was like, what if we did went inside Google for a long, in a long form journalism piece. And um, he wrote the first draft, and it was great. I mean, he's a good writer. So not really much of a Most of our idea. anecdotes are someone sat down, and then it happened. Yeah, <laughs> done and typed an article. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> yes. yes. Talk, uh, please talk we, to us after. We, stay, stay around. We had an idea to do this. Like to, that was what we were going to try to like. That was going to be a like, possible conceit of this. This presentation thing. where we try to convince you. That was all about convincing us. To be like, yeah. Uh, okay. That cool. would be yep. incredible. Yep. That would be great. <laughs> the question is, uh, what are some headlines you like that didn't make it uh, on the site? This is this is a 
hard. Well, it's harder for you because if 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 you don't like it, it doesn't go yeah, on site. Go so on I site. don't know if there's anything that you feel like you've missed out on. Um, you know, um, there have been times where we've rejected an idea in the room, and then later we're just like, let's just put it up, um, I, which is not that at all. Um, but I, yeah, I really can't think of an idea that. I, can't. I mean, if, if something is um, rejected from the room, it's it's oftentimes because it's wrong, wrong headed or doesn't feel right. One idea that I I just thought of, I don't even know if I like it, but it was um, it was a video that was um, incredible. Watch this plus size model demolish a subway sub. <laughs> was like, we knew when we like shouldn't do that idea, but so like that's an idea. I mean, I, I but I don't think we should have done it. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I guess I can just say the it question here. is more. It's just um, you know oh, yeah. a lot of other sites, uh, a lot of more potentially respectable sites um, are using more clickbait tactics um, in their headlines, um, and if that's just kind of the way it's going to be, essentially is the question. And y yeah, probably. Um, <laughs> which we're far from being experts on this. We're just yeah. guys who sit in the room in Chicago and make things. Um, but I think also. You know what we also see every day is that everybody's just jockeying for attention. That's like the only capital on the internet, um, and that's why you know everything has to be the most amazing thing that exists. Um, and it's more amazing than the last thing that was also the most amazing thing. Um, so I think pr pr probably that's just going to be the way it, it is. Um, yeah, it's fascinating to watch for sure. Yes, it is. Um, how important is YouTube to your strategy? And what do you think YouTube could do better? What what is that? What do you say? Just in general. <laughs> God, I'm, God, I'm so good. That's not fair. Uh, it's, um, it's important. Say strategy. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you think? I don't know. If we we use it. <laughs> what do we use it for? Actually, do we? Yeah. We put. I guess we yeah, put yeah. videos up on YouTube. Yeah. People watch them there. Uh, the question is, where do you get your pitches? Um, I think, yeah, I mean, I think we just, you kind of just go and try to find them from some maddening place. Like, they, I don't know where ideas come from. It's so weird and amorphous. Sometimes, the, the thing is, I think a lot of times ideas will get shut down in the room because they feel to like a one-for-one -one parody of something, um, which is hard to explain without examples. But, um, yeah, I think I think you can look online a, to a certain degree and look at what people are doing, but after a certain point, it becomes kind of repetitive and constant. And if you want your ideas to stand out from another writer's list who's also drawing from the same online pool, um, you kind of have to kind of just go into a room in silence and sort of just think as weird as possible, which is <laughs> amazingly fun and also frustrating. <laughs> All right, everyone, we're, uh, we're just about out of time. So before we leave, please give a big thank you to our amazing guests.